All right. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Fusion 360 Increment webinar course series. I hope all of you are doing good. We see a great turnout again today. So we have, we have Rohit as our expert for today, and he will discuss the ins and outs of the drawing workspace to create a complete manufacturing drawing package using the latest automation workflows. Hey, hi Rohit, welcome. Sure. Uh, let me begin with our vision uh, for the drawing. The vision for the for the drawing team is to provide a tool set that allows mechanical engineers and designers to thoroughly document the entire product development and manufacturing process as quickly and on standard as possible. I'm reading it out so that I don't miss anything in that. This is our vision and we are pursuing this uh, while we are working on the drawings. So without taking any more time, let me get to the drawings. So hello everyone. Again, my name is Rohit. I'm a product, one of the product owners for the drawing teams uh, for the Fusion 360. I will take you through a story uh, with, with my presentation, with my demo. Uh, this is an assembly uh, I have. It's kind of a typical assembly that you can see in uh, your work also. I will begin with creating a drawing. Now there are multiple entry points for creating a drawing. One is right click on the browser. Other one is drop down in design, from design, from animation, I'll, I'll talk about it in some time. But this is another entry point. And also through the menu, you can create a drawing uh, from design. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a drawing from design. I get all these options uh, in this dialog. You can have full assembly, you can have visible only, and you can have select. What this is a new feature that got introduced recently. Actually, this is the latest production build that I have that got released yesterday. What this will allow you, uh, you to do is that sometimes what we do is we hide some of the components for better visibility or our usability purposes, whichever it is. So in this case now, I'm not seeing these components on my on my screen. So in this case, if I try to create a, uh, create a drawing out of it, we automatically detect that some of the components, some of the parts are hidden. So the contents will be visible only. Essentially what it means is what you see on the screen is what you get on your, uh, in, in your drawing, okay? Uh, this again, creating a new drawing or adding to a new one. I'll talk about it in some time. Templates, I will speak in some time, but for now, let me make all things visible. It is, I, I will cover that in some time. So I'll take all the assembly uh, in my drawing. I'll create a drawing with the uh, default options that I have, create new, I don't want to do, I will create from scratch, no uh, template or nothing. So the sheet size I'm choosing, I'm using, for example, ASME, just in case, and uh, you can you can have multiple uh, sheet sizes as well as for the. I hit OK. All right. Uh, by default, what we do is we attach the base view to our cursor. You can place it uh, at any point you want on the canvas. You can change the scale. Of it. Once my, my view is placed, you can double click and still edit some of the things if you want. If you want to change the style, if you want to change the orientation, uh, if you want to see uh, the tangent uh, edges, if you want to see inference edges, thread edges. So there are multiple options. You can double click the view. Uh, remember, this applies to all the views on the canvas, not just the base view. Okay. Any view, you double click, you will go into uh, the edit mode of that view. What I'll do is I'll just change the scale so that it just becomes slightly bigger. So this becomes my base view. And as you can see, I have border. Now this border right now is uh, shown or created by default according to uh, the standards. And the title block, this is what we call the default title block. 
there is a way to edit that i'll come to it in some time so i have placed my base view as you can see on the left hand side all my components uh, of my assembly are now in in my drawing uh, some of the old users might have recognized that the the tool tools which were there down here we used to call it navbar are now moved on to uh, the browser as we call it on the left hand side this was a new uh, this was announcement that we introduced in may release so it's been uh, last uh, previous release uh, we introduced that if you want to change uh, any of the options here you can uh, uh, edit those i'll come to in, uh, it in a minute before before that, i want to create some project reviews one two three as many as you want there is no restriction to that okay now the thing is another feature that we introduced in may release was line widths what happens is right now all these lines as you can see are of the same thicknesses there is no way to say which uh, line is thinner which line is thicker there is no way to identify that so what we did is apart from the settings which were already there uh, before the may release also we introduced a new setting for line widths in the line settings you have five uh, six i'm sorry five groups which is very thin thin medium thick and very thick what it does is that by default it is medium by medium i mean the thin line width will be 0.25 medium line width will be 0.35 and thick line will be 0.5 millimeters this is also according to the uh, the drafting uh, standards i will say we studied uh, the standards that we knew and we came up with this combination so that we can have a better combination and overlap between the line widths uh, for example if i choose thin line width it i will is, have to uh, sir to interrupt uh, i i think there is some uh, some lagging in the audio so maybe you can turn off the video and that will be a good help okay is that okay much yeah okay sure okay so as you can see uh, we have multiple line widths uh, line width groups according to uh, the usage but to see them on canvas you will have to check this uh, box here display line widths because otherwise this these properties will be set but you will not be able to see them you will see them only when you output as a pdf i'll talk about it also in in, in some time but just remember this change the line width group you have that in document settings you have that in preference also but this is uh, somehow easier way as we have found with uh, with our customers in the document settings and you check the display language you hit okay and as you can see actually the line width got changed let me change it to some extreme so that it will be more visible for example thick yeah so as you can see the outer boundaries of the of the view those got the uh, thicker line widths the minor edges those got uh, slightly thinner uh, line widths so this is how you can change the line widths in in your drawing so i will i will highly recommend to go ahead go in the document settings uh, change uh the language group and check which one uh is best fit uh, for your assembly and for your drawings because depending on size depending on size of the sheet depending on the model itself uh, you might want to change the group so uh please please go ahead and try those uh, with with all all the work that you are doing uh one uh, important tip i want to give with this is that we have document settings and we have sheet settings here okay so an important thing to remember is that document setting get applied on all the sheets you have in this document so i can have multiple sheets in my drawing 
if i change something in the document settings the settings get applied on all the sheets in the drawing but in case of sheet settings these settings will get applied only for uh, this particular drawing for example let me add a sample uh, sheet here i go to the sheet settings and i try to change the sheet size because it is possible that you will have some sheets of some particular size and some sheets of some other size it is possible i will change the sheet size of uh, of this particular sheet to a and it got changed now if i switch back to my first sheet as you can see there is no change on the sheet so uh, just to repeat document settings get applied on all the sheets in the document sheet settings get applied only on the active sheet uh, that you are working on now once you have placed uh, the views now the thing is this places previously uh, what you have to do was click and then drag but the last uh, the last uh, release that we had yesterday you can just click and drag and it moves this was a new enhancement that we introduced uh, we had uh, uh, several customers asking us that the dragging click and drag does not feel like fusion it feels more like uh, you have to click and then you have to pick the grip point and then you have to drag so now the dragging became uh, easier and faster so this was one of the enhancements uh, that was introduced in the latest build now once i have placed my uh, assembly and the views as i want them uh, i would like to add the the balloons for my assembly now there is a reason why i picked parts list in in general this is the preview for the part list i'll tell you why let me place it first of course i'll have to move this this slightly yeah better we can move this balloons as well we don't have to be as quantum all right so i have my part list and i have my uh, uh balloons as well on on my sheet now this table command one uh, important tip again is that it automatically recognizes what kind of uh, representation you have on the sheet for example if you have no representation on the sheet nothing by default it will go to the reference because i have added to that sheet but if you want to change it you can actually create an empty uh, empty table so there is a way to add an empty table all you have to do is go to the drop down and choose empty table so if you have reference then it will automatically detect what kind of reference you have whether you have assembly or whether you have uh, uh, a sheet i'm sorry whether whether you have a sheet metal body where you have uh, where, where you will need to add the bent table so depending on what reference you have we will automatically uh, run that command and we will get the table for that particular assembly now another important aspect here is this title block okay it doesn't have to be like this all the time if you want to change it you can directly right click and edit the title block what we have here provided is the default title block it is based on a default title block that we have created but there are uh, three different ways you can uh, have the title block one is you can use the source title block that is already provided uh, with the fusion 360 you can choose to create uh, from scratch then you will have to build it uh, from everything all these lines everything the third option is to get it from a drawing file there are there is possible it is possible that uh, some users can have title blocks created in uh, uh, other softwares like autocad for example where you can actually create a block title block you can import that title block through dwg file also so there are three 
uh, ways to uh, edit add the title block i'll go ahead and i'll choose the default one i don't want to uh, go into the dwg files i think uh, something for users to explore and i'll highly recommend to explore that now what we have here is we have geometries lines rectangles circles arcs we have some tools called move rotate copy paste cut extend etc so these are geometrical tools that we have then we have text to be placed on uh, uh, in, in your title block then we have attributes and i'll tell you for example how the attributes uh, attributes can work so for example i want to add the scale of my drawing into my uh, title block now as you can see automatically it took the 0.35 language which is actually the medium language for this particular drawing i can select drawing on the canvas and change its uh, language as per as per my need it is possible all you have to do is select the geometry uh, in the drop down change the uh, line width there are different line types also center uh, hidden phantom uh, depending on the usage of it like i said uh, i will show how to it's it's a straightforward way to add a text for example i want to add a scale now every time we cannot type and add the scale right so that's where attributes come really handy attributes are some properties that are uh, that are read uh, from the document itself there are several options into it drawn by drawn date which we are, actually if you see we have used those in our default title block some of them not all of them some of them uh, we have the scale here uh, as well but for for example i'm just giving scale or sheet size it can be anything so if i add uh, the drawing scale here what it will do is every time i'm using this title block okay, it will automatically find what kind of scale i used to create my base view so it took the scale from my base view so this is how you can add uh, as many attributes as you want you can change the title block you can add the images also to insert so there are several options to modify the title block uh, as per the need, as per the uh, standard of, uh, of, of your uh, institution. Apart from that, uh, recently we added a, uh, in, in, May, uh, in May we introduced one uh, feature called sketches in, uh, in drawings, which was also one of the uh, highly asked uh, feature uh, from the customer as you can see here for for some of those who already have used fusion 360 uh, the button looks same as modeling sketch but it is slightly different I'll, I'll show you how so when i hit on the sketch uh, button it created a sketch for me uh, in in my in my drawings here as you can see so for example i want to add a note here for the for the view okay i created a rectangle i created the text and okay i'm just giving a demo so i'll put random uh, text here internal user for example some kind of note you want to put uh, in this text slightly okay cool now there are several options like i said you can add text same as title block you can add the uh, geometries in in this sketch circles rectangles are and there is one uh, leader command also for example it doesn't have to be uh, a leader with a text it can be just simply an arrow so that leader command in the sketch creates an arrow I don't want it right now, so I'll, I'll just delete it for now. So I'm done uh, adding this sketch. Again, even in this sketch also, you can select and change the line widths. Now these line widths are derived from the line width groups. Uh, if you remember from our document settings, 
we had the groups. These widths are derived from the line width group that uh, user has uh, chosen. Now, another important uh, thing or tip to remember is that you can you can select the thickness first and then go for the line, and then it will take the line width as per as per the need. So you don't have to select and then change the line width. You can, of course, but in in Sketch or in Title Block Edit, choose the line width first and then create the uh, create the geometry. Or else you can do it post creation also. Select the geometry and change the line width. Both ways possible. I selected it and I changed the line width normal, so it became small again. I want it. So here is. Here is again uh, highly asked uh, feature. Actually, it is really nice. You like it. I'll hit finish sketch. So I have added this sketch into my uh, sheet number one. Now the question is, how do I get this uh, geometry and my note into another sheet that I have? There are two ways. Again, you can directly select the sketch from here. You can click on copy, switch to the text, go to the canvas and paste and put it as per the need. You can put it anywhere you want. So it, is, it has now become easier to copy and paste all these uh, geometries from the sketch, the text from the sketch uh, across the board. Uh, so no need to create these sketches again and again. Uh, there are three ways to copy and paste. One is, like I said, directly, you can select the sketch, right click and copy, or else you can select the sketch in the browser, right click, copy. This is also possible. It adds a new uh, sketch in, in the browser. It is also possible to uh, go in the edit sketch mode, then copy some of the items. What happened is because I was outside the sketch mode, it copied everything in that sketch. But for example, if you just want this uh, to be copied and not the rectangle, you will have to go in the edit sketch mode, then right click, then copy, finish sketch, and go here to create a new sketch. This is a let me sketch and I'll paste and I'll get my text where I want. So if you want to, for example, copy individual items, you'll have to go in the edit sketch mode, copy and then paste. If you want to copy all the stuff in a particular sketch, you can directly copy the sketch itself. Now, uh, there are other assemblies in, in my drawings. Let me go back to the modeling. Uh, I, I have a sheet metal part, okay? Now I want uh, a particular drawing, particular sheet only for this sheet metal part in the drawing that I'm currently working on. Sometimes it happens that we go on creating the drawing and we want to add some extra items in the current sheet, but uh, the tip here or the, the way to do it is actually in the model Right click on the component you want to create a drawing for. In, in the drawing, uh, in the destination, the drawings, right? You will see the untitled drawing here. This is the untitled drawing that I was, the, that I'm actually working on, that I've actually created. So depending on how many drawings you have opened, uh, you have open, uh, it should be open, okay? You don't open it automatically for you. So if you want to add it, it should be open. And because it is open, it's showing in my drop down. What I will do is I'll select this untitled drawing. So without doing any uh, going out or without creating any other extra drawings as such, I chose the same document. Now there are a couple of options. Uh, the drawing document, you can choose in which sheet you want to add uh, this, this metal part. You can create a new sheet, you can add to these sheet, sheets that we are seeing, actually, these are the sheets that are created uh, in my untitled uh, document. So I'll go ahead and create the new sheet only. 
Okay. I'll place my view. Right. So I got my reference here. Now, yeah. I'm sorry. So in this uh, in this model, now the thing is, I would like to have uh, unfolded uh, part also, un unfolded part of this as well. So what I'll have to do is, again, I go to the flat pattern. And in the flat pattern, I have to click again, the right click, add to the drawing, same procedure, choose the untitled. Now, instead of choosing the new sheet, because I want both folded and unfolded uh, sheet metal part in the same uh, sheet, I will choose my fourth sheet, which actually contained the folded uh, component. So it went to the sheet number four and I am placing it here. So you can actually have folded and unfolded uh, both components in one sheet. Uh, the way to do is what I showed uh, just right now. Now here comes the interesting part. If I click on the table uh, table command, right? I have a part here, which is like a regular part. Even if it is folded part, it's, like, it's a regular part. But I have additional representation of unfolded part, the, the flat pattern, okay? So when I hit on adding the part table, right? The command does not know right now for which view you want to add because you can choose the component to add a part list. You can choose the flat pattern to add a blend table as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose the uh, flat pattern and it will automatically add blend table for me. So this table command is actually uh, it automates as far as possible, as long as possible. But there, if there is a choice to make, uh, user will have to select which you want to add uh, in the table for. Okay, all right. Okay, before before I jump to something else, let me show you one. Uh, as you can see, there are dimensions. There are multiple uh, dimensions here, but I would like to go with one a different kind of dimension called ordinate dimension where you can choose your reference line and all you have to do is click your next point and we'll add the ordinate dimensions with respect to that datum So this is one of those uh, commands that you can use uh, to create the ordinate dimension. Now, as, as it goes in this direction, it can go in any direction, depending on where you're moving the cursor. But once the uh, you create the ordinate dimension, you can individually move them as well. Move uh, move their, the text, not, not the points. You, you can, but you will have to then move this point where it contacts. The, the surface. Another dimension type of dimension is uh, chain dimension. I will show you one example of that. So I will add one dimension here. Now, every time I cannot go on selecting, you know, each points and all that. So what I'll do is we have a another smart mod called chain dimension. But for change dimension, you will have to choose the base dimension from, from which dimension you want to begin, okay? First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So as you can, oh, so, first, second, third, fourth. Okay. So two kind of uh, kinds of dimensions which are uh, widely used in uh, sheet metal work especially, but in other places as well, where you have elongated uh, profiles in, in your part. So these are the ordinate dimensions, and these are for the these are the chain dimensions. Remember, for chain dimensions, you have to choose the base dimension first, so that we can use that reference to add 
multiple uh, chain dimensions after that now doing all this okay i'm i'm doing it everything manually as you can, as you can see i've added this view manually i added this part manually everything manual only right but the problem is i can actually have really hundreds of parts thousands of parts sometimes you know it it is impossible at times to get all the parts the drawings manually get done in the time now the best way to do it that provision says to automate also the workflows uh what what we recommend from uh, fusion is to use the smart template what i mean by smart template is that a template as the name suggests is just a uh, a, a kind of mold or a template as to how do you want to create the drawing for a particular representation i will tell you what i'm what i'm talking about but just before we go there this is how my template looks like it can change also depending on how we want to create it this is just a sample template okay i have one sheet where i'm having the uh, placeholder Uh, for the uh, for the whole assembly i have four views then i have a uh, component then i have sheet metal as well as a uh, folded component the flat pattern as well as the folded component in one sheet then i have uh, animation uh, storyboard as well what i'll do is i'll create a new one just for the demo so there are the 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 way to do is you go to the file uh, menu new drawing template you initially it was here in the drop down but we uh, got several uh, feedback from customer that it is difficult to find it so we moved it up in the move, uh, in the, in the main uh, main menu now for the template also you can choose actually if you want to uh, create a template based on some other template or you want to create from scratch i'll create from scratch i'll choose asme and i'll choose this is fine we can change it while creating the sheet also as we saw some time ago i'll create a new template okay all right so as you can see i have a drop down called representation there are multiple representations in your assembly you can have uh, in in your uh, model i'm sorry you can have assembly you can have a component you can have folded component like i have in my assembly you can have a flat pattern or you can have a storyboard uh, good news is in my model I have all of them so i can show all of all of those i'll choose the assembly Th this is the typical uh, sequence i go with it doesn't have to be the same sequence so don't worry about that you can choose any sequence uh, as as you want so i'll place my representation as assembly and place my views okay i can add table also same as the drawing it recognize that i have placed the assembly so the table by default it shows it doesn't have to be like that you can choose empty table at any point of time but because uh, it's a smart command it found out that i have assembly representation in my sheet so it took the uh, part list as the default list you know i'll create another sheet now here as a representation instead of assembly i want to uh, create sheets for the parts which are in my uh, assemblies so i will choose the component uh, ref, uh, representation again you can add views I'll, i'll add lesser views so as to conserve some time next sheet now here just like what we did during creation i can add a folded component in the same sheet you can again add another uh, placeholder of flat pattern you can do that it doesn't have to be uh, just one base view for one sheet no you can have as many representations as you want depending on what you have chosen in the representation uh, drop down now again the same dilemma that we had during our sheet it does not know which view do you want to choose for creating the table if i choose the folded model it will create a part list 
if I choose the flat pattern, it will create the bend table for me. So these are these are just placeholders for for the tables, right? This is just a template we are talking about. Another sheet. Now I'll choose a representation as storyboard, the animation storyboard that we have, and then the animation because I will treat this sheet as just representation sheet if you want to show it to someone, uh, just as how it looks like. And in my uh, animation storyboard, I added a part list again. It found out that this is animation storyboard, so there is no individual uh, sheet component here. So automatically it chose the part list. I'll go ahead and uh, save this as MD. Uh, okay. So all the work I did manually in, in my drawing here, like not, not the dimensions, okay, except the dimensions, but creation of these drawings, creation of these tables, the balloons, and you know, going back to the model, getting it here and all that. Now all that will be taken care with my template. I'll show you how. Right click on the assembly. Now here in, in the template, instead of uh, from scratch, I will choose the uh, template I, that I just created, the demo assembly. Okay. Now you will see a checkbox here that comes up whenever you have except components in your in your uh, model. So this is just a checkbox whether you want to include those in your drawings or not. You can keep uh, you can keep that empty as well. For time's sake, I'll keep it empty, but give it a try. Give it a try. It it works good with all the link components uh, that you have. Okay, I'll go ahead with that anyhow. That's fine. So contents is full assembly. I chose my template that I just created and I click OK. And I just wait for some seconds. Hopefully. Yeah. I started building up my sheets. See? It would have taken like hours for me to create all these sheets, right? individually picking up all the components and all that. Basically what, what I did is I just automated my process of creation of basic uh, drawings for me. Now, once you have those, it's like any other sheet that you have that you can edit as per your need. You can edit this balloons, you can double click on the view, change the representation and style anything as you want. So ju just imagine, for example, I have so many sheets right here. This is the same thing that, that I had, so many sheets that I had, and it would have taken really a lot of time for me to create all these. So this is the way to use uh, smart templates. In the smart templates also, you can choose to edit the title block just like any other drawing. You can choose to edit the border by right click, I'm sorry. select the border, right click. So you, you, can, you can do all those um, uh, enhancements to your drawing as per need, just like you do in your uh, drawing, the, the drawings that we created. Okay, so there is no difference as such when it comes to editing the title log, editing the border, having the representation and uh, those, those placeholders, there is no, uh, it's, it's all available. You can choose as per you want, okay? Um, another good feature that we uh, released just yesterday, actually, is that the cross sections. Now, previously, and I'll choose some part here, let me choose some. Okay, let's have this part, for example. Previously, when you create the uh, section view, it used to take the default name, incremental uh, name for the section, like A, B, you know, just, just goes on. Now what we have done is that there is a place to change the name of it. Currently, by default, it is showing, uh, it is saying section A. I, ca I can change it to B. 
and it becomes desaturated. So this is another feature that uh, was introduced uh, in the latest uh, update that we had. I will have, highly recommend to update uh, to the new uh, Fusion 360 and give it a try. Uh, please do use it. Uh, and th there is no limitation, like you can choose whatever name is as per the standard. So there is no, uh, there is no issue uh, with that. You can give whatever name as you want. So uh, let me make sure I have covered everything. Yes, I think I covered most of it. There are, uh, okay, there, there is one, uh, one really good feature that I got introduced, sorry for that, is many a times, you know, I'm just taking this as a demo, okay, it's not, many a times, this, this dimension, you know, this unit is actually derived from the unit of my, uh, uh, unit of my drawing, unit of my document that I've set. But at times you're working with your vendor, for example, who wants this dimension in millimeters, say, you know, how do you do that? This feature got introduced in the latest uh, update that we had yesterday, where you can change the dimension units now. This is in the document settings. In the document settings, you have dimension units. You can change the dimension units. By default, it was inches because it is this is what I chose when I created a drawing. I changed it to millimeters. I hit OK and it changed to millimeters. Now, this is pretty useful and this will get applied onto all the dimensions that you have in your drawing all the sheets because it's part of document settings right uh, now if you want to see uh, like what was the original uh, dimension to you know with which it got changed to there is a checkbox if you double click the dimension you'll get this dialog box for editing uh, the properties of the dimension if you check this box you'll see the alternate units so what it did basically is it showed you what was the uh, original dimension put, and this is the dimension that you get when you changed the, the unit. Double click, and you will have this uh, checkbox here. Apart from, uh, apart from those, you have kind of tolerances you want to add. You can have symmetric tolerances. You can have deviation uh, uh, type of tolerances. You can put limits. So there are multiple ways to uh, put your tolerances as well. I will again highly recommend to explore all these uh, in, in your uh, workplace. This is one of the themes that I tell everyone, keep on, keep on exploring, keep on exploring, because there are um, uh, some things which are in the dialogue, right? We, we cannot put them in the, in the representations. You have scale, no scale. So multiple options, even in the dimensions. Uh, I, I won't go too much into that because it will eat up a lot of time. But just remember, there are multiple options in the dimensions when you double click. So this was one of the uh, important uh, feature that that got released uh, in in the in the recent update that we had. Now once you have, I'll just take a uh, probably just one minute before I go. There is a leader command here. You can add. Uh, the text for the leader again, it directly goes into uh, the text mode. You can add symbols to it as per the need. So this is also possible. And I hit OK and you add the leader here. There are symbols here. Probably you guys must be using this more than me. So. There are surface texture options. There are uh, feature control annotations, datum identifiers. All of them are under this symbol uh, drop down. Now, once everything is done, for example, I want to send it to output. Okay, there are several uh, options. Like, how do you want to give this drawing to someone? One is output the PDF. There is a checkbox here. I, I told about the line weights, right? So if you check this check uh, turn on this line widths checkbox when you create the pdf 
uh, of of this sheet all the line weights properties that were set uh, through the document settings will get applied whether you selected display or not so that was what i was talking about another way is to output dwg another way is output sheet as dxf so this uh, also introduced in this year uh, it's been some time it's been there for some time so there are multiple ways to uh, output your sheet uh, small tip just before i go you can rename right click on the uh, on the sheets and you can add a new sheet you can delete the sheet you can rename the sheet so if you want to change the name of uh, of some sheet you can go ahead and change the name of it if you don't like the sequence you can click and you can drag the sheet to change the sequences so it doesn't have to be the sequence in which you have created right even after creation of the sheets you can change the sequence just drag and place it wherever uh, wherever uh, you do sir okay i guess with with my <laughs> limited time i try to cover as as much as possible uh, so uh, th there are multiple things but these i i believe are the most useful tools for uh, your workflows uh, if not i'll be happy to answer any questions uh, varun i'm uh, back to you i'm, I'm done hey this. rohit thank you so much for the great si insights and we do have some amazing questions in the q and a mm -hmm. box right yeah. and let me take out some questions for you uh, yeah. so prashant asked this question uh, how can i control the components visibility in section views only how can you go okay in the section views only okay let me do that's a good question and move okay let me choose another sheet too many things there i'll put my assembly here okay and please the okay okay so when you create the section view once you put the section line in place if you see this dialog you have objects to cut what i do is let me change the representation so that it becomes you know good good to see to uh, understand how it works so for example i can choose which body uh, i'm sorry which part i want to cut with my uh, section uh, for example if i choose not to include the engine body you see the the preview uh, you will see that it got changed i don't want head to be part of my section view so this way you can choose uh, which part uh, you want to uh, have the section view for and which you don't want so this this is the place where you can control that and once it is placed it is it's not end of the world if even if you want to change something you can double click on the view and you can add or remove uh, the the bodies from it right thank you so much did, did, I, did i answer that question i think uh, maybe prashant can put uh, in the chat box if he's happy with okay. the answer let's take up one another question sure uh, so so meshwar asked this uh, soma shekhar asked this question how to mm -hmm. give dnt symbols how to how to give gd and t symbols he's saying i know in many bar they will be uh, it will be show, showing something mm -hmm. uh, so as far as the tolerances are concerned uh, one of the ways that i showed is to go through the dimensions you can add those here yeah. so tolerances are here and rest of the annotations we can get from feature controls and you can add as many uh, symbols and as many uh, frames as you want right yeah 
So so the, there are lots of symbols here. I, I, will, I will again recommend to explore. Yes. Because it depends on the use, depends on the application. So, uh, but but the, the, there is these two ways to get. One one is for the tallness, and I know it's uh, not directly part of GDT, but at times editing the properties of dimensions gets missed, and so I, I wanted to show it again just just to make sure. Yeah. Right. Another question is: Can we import? Table from Excel on any other software in drawing? Uh, directly importing the table. Yeah, we, from Excel sheet or something. Yeah, we, we have it in our uh, uh, like future uh, roadmap, but currently we cannot directly copy and paste uh, from the sheet. Right. Okay, so Jishnu asked this question. Can we add surface finish and weld texture? Uh, weld symbols are something uh, we are currently working on. I am not at privilege to say when it will be released, but that is something hmm. we are working on. Uh, what was the other one? I'm sorry. The Can surface. we add surface finish? Right. Surface texture. Yes. This is the command for the surface texture. Again, choose the uh, object to add, and you will have all the uh, options again uh, for the surface texture. But for uh, weld symbols, uh, it's something in pipeline. We will uh, post more uh, once it gets to a point where we can, you know, let let right. everyone. It's in, it's yeah. In so this is kind of work in progress. Maybe we can say yes. that. Yes. yes it's in okay. Ashok asked this question, how to do automatic dimensioning? Uh, that's a good question. Fusion 360 right now doesn't have like direct automatic dimensions. Uh, uh, that's also one of the projects that's uh, work in uh, progress. Right. Uh, there are multiple disciplines, uh, multiple uh, teams involved. Uh, it's it's something in working progress. It's mm -hmm. not, you don't directly have it right now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to more questions. So, Mr. Sulola asked this question: How can I get people's team link to join in Fusion 360? Okay. I think this is. Uh, we have one webinar on remote team collaboration. But if you want to answer okay. that, okay. it's up to you. It's completely all right. If I know, I will. Sure. So, what what was the question again? The question is, he wants to know how can he get people's team link. I like he want to have people to jo join his project in Fusion 360. Oh, okay. Uh, it's an easier yes. way to do it. You have the project here. Uh, this is this is my project that I created. This is for, for my uh, for the demo purpose. I created this project for for this demo particularly. In the people here at the top, you can put the email address and just invite. Right. That's so this is one thing. way of uh, doing it. The other way is actually uh, to go to your Autodesk account and go to that project in the in the browser uh, in your profile. And there you will have an uh, invite button. Sorry for the noise. No worry. But, it's yeah. really audible. You can, yeah, you, you can, you can uh, uh, go to your profile, like like I said from here, the Autodesk profile, and in the projects you will you will have to locate the project, and just like the uh, uh, participants, there, there will be a button called invite, and the same way yes. you will have to get the email ID and all. But uh, you can invite from here also. You don't have to come outside the Fusion 360. It's just that the right. browser gives you more options, more tools. So that's, that's all. Right. Okay, we have another good question by Satyam. Can I get drawing of my design in a desired angle, other than which is set by default in Fusion 360? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. I'll show you. Okay, 
So I'll put the base view here. But if you see the orientation, if you, if you see that, I I, I have a uh, sorry, I I have a placed view actually. I have a view that I created in my assembly called carburetor. Let me go to the model to show. It. In in my name views, I have I have a name view called carburetor. So what you can do is in your model, you can change uh, the view as per your need. Create the uh, new name view and create this name view like let's rename it. I can give any name actually. So this view, this is a particular angle. Uh, in which uh, the projections uh, or the view will be created. You know, I'll use that. So let me save that. I'll have to save. So. Yeah, you have to save to get it. Yeah, you need to. Update. Okay, this is probably a, another good point of demo. Okay, <laughs> you can change uh, something in your model. You will have to save it. Uh, then you will see uh, the triangle here, warning triangle that said it's out of date. All I did was just updated my drawing according to changes in my model. So the base view in my orientation, I have row view now. So depending on the angle there that I go. set, I got the view. Yeah. So th this is the way uh, to get those angles in, uh, in this view. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm taking the last question. Can we be able to break relationship between projected view and add custom relations? I think this is the same question. Uh, okay. I, I will do something. Let me know if this is something you're talking about because right now if I uh, move around so do you see my cursor even if I'm moving here or there yes still it is just moving in in the you know with respect to the base view of it all you have to do is shift don't you don't have to press hold press shift all the time select uh, the view click shift and move around so now my drawing is not directly related to where my base view is if you want to get it in line place uh, the view click the shift again and it comes back on, onto this line so select the view, hit shift. It breaks from the uh, uh, from the relation with the base view. Uh, if you want to get it back, again select the view, press shift, and it falls back into your into in the previous relationship that it had. Right. So I, I think I answered that. Yes, absolutely. So I think this is time we have to conclude this session. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll quickly. Go back to my presentation. All right, so thank you so much, Rohit. It was kind of very interesting and very insightful session. Okay. And uh, so everyone, and if you are keen to understand the fundamentals of PCB design overall process, and wants to get familiar with Fusion Electronics library, schematic and PCB ed editing environment, join us tomorrow. So, this webinar will be providing an introduction to Fusion 360 Electronics with a comprehensive explanation of how to access our new electronics design and library workspace. Manoj, our expert, will be joining us and he will be demonstrating the basic workflows from creating a schematic circuit, designing a board and PCB editor, and exporting its manufacturing files. Not last but not the least, today you might have heard that this uh, today we have launched a new campaign. So Fusion 360 is available 
at a 50% off price right now. This will happen for some time. So if anybody who wants to subscribe to Fusion, this is the right time. And you can go for one year or three year subscription. Easiest way to go with that is just go to this link. Autodesk F360 promo. It will take you to the website and you can just uh, subscribe to Fusion. In case you have any other questions, you want to reach out to us. So we are very active on social media. Reach out to us on Instagram, Fusion360 India. If you have some other questions and you want to reach out to me, this is my personal handle. Okay, once again, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for your time. And I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye and have a good one. Thank you again. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Rohit. Thank you, Anand.